Mrs. Appleton was a vision. I heard my father say that once. Mum thumped his arm, branding him with a territorial stamp of disapproval. And then she surveyed our lounging neighbour with a squint, sealing her lips into a thin, firm line. I was only eleven years old, but I could tell that Mum agreed with Dad. That was why she reacted so ferociously. I hadn't experienced much of the world, but even I understood that Mrs. Appleton was unusually alluring. Well, I wouldn't risk wetting your hose over there, Mum said, rolling her eyes. Not if you want to keep it. <laughs> my father snorted, and I stared blankly. I had no idea what my mother meant. I don't think she'd look twice at me. <laughs> Dad chuckled. Oh, so you're settling for me? Someone more attainable? My father awkwardly searched for a ladder out of a self-dug hole. Uh, I, I meant that she's too young. <coughs> he coughed. Right. Well, she's an exhibitionist, my mum scowled. I mean, look at the time. It's nine o'clock in the evening. Our children are about to go to bed. Meanwhile, she's posing on her front lawn in a skimpy swimsuit, showcasing herself like a spring sale at H&M. Take a breath, darling. But you're right, it is strange. She must be getting cold out there, Dad said. Oh, do you think so? Well, go and warm her up, sweetie, my mum pouted, leaving the room. <sighs> Dad sighed, turning his attention to me with a despairing grin. He placed a hand on my shoulder and patted it lightly. Be wiser with your mouth than me, son, he said. That's the only piece of advice this moron has to give. It was a warning that would save me from a horror I still don't understand. I remember the first time Mrs. Appleton saw me. Saw me seeing her. I was peeping out of my bedroom window. Must have been around midnight. I lied to myself. Pretended to simply be curious about how long my neighbour would stay on her front lawn. But the truth was that I was simply unable to peel my eyes away. I'd never felt such a bewildering mixture of lust and fear. The latter emotion only strengthened when the spectacular woman looked up at me and smiled. It was not a slow, measured motion. It was a snap of unnatural speed. A movement that led my neighbour's eyes to lock onto mine with such precision that I knew she'd been aware of my gaze for a long time. Mrs. Appleton continued grinning, begging me to do something, pleading with her eyes. I internally shrieked, drew the curtains and leapt into bed. In spite of that awful moment, I didn't mind Mrs. Appleton. No, that's non-committal. I loved her. Loved how popular she made me. When my best pal, Jason, noticed Mrs. Appleton on her front lawn during a sleepover, word soon spread around school. I had friends before the young woman moved to our street, but I certainly gained friends after Jason spilled the secret. Hormonal boys made pilgrimages to my house. They were desperate to see the half-nude woman on the street, and I was desperate for an elevated social status. When their parents arrived to pick them up, however, the sun would still be hanging in the sky, and Mrs. Appleton would not have emerged. My new friends would begrudgingly go home, and I'd feel my credibility slipping away. So, after relentless pestering, I agreed to let a couple of boys join Jason and me at one of our monthly sleepovers. This has been a revolving door of visitors recently, my mum said, patting the door to my bedroom. My older sister, Gemma, 
grinned over her shoulder. What do you think, Mum? Do you reckon Dean has suddenly become super popular? (laughs) I narrowed my eyes at Gemma, willing her not to tell our mother why so many boys were interested in spending the night at our house. When Mum disappeared to make dinner, I let my sister know what I thought. Stop being such a donkey, I said. (laughs) Don't you kids know about porn? (laughs) Gemma snorted. Oh, how embarrassing. Enjoy your evening of creeping, losers. My sister ducked, dodging an airborne plushie I launched at her head, and she muttered something about counting the days until university. (laughs) My friends and I breathed a collective sigh of relief when she shut the door behind her. You know, Dean, your sister's pretty hot too, Bowen said. Don't be gross, man, I replied. We're here for the sexy night lady. Night lady? I think my dad likes those. That's why mum and him aren't together anymore, apparently, Isaac said. Oh, I've never seen a girl do this, Bowen gasped, pressing a pair of binoculars against the window pane. She's just come outside, guys. You brought binoculars, I asked. I'm sorry, bro, Jason apologised on Bowen's behalf. I shouldn't have told him. I shrugged. It's alright. I get it. She's fit. She's really fit, Bowen qualified. But what is she doing? Isaac squinted out of the window. Yeah, this is kind of weird. I I didn't really think about it when Jason told us. Think about what? I asked. Bowen laughed. (laughs) Why is she sunbathing at night? I thought for a moment, and then something funny came to me. She's moonbathing, I replied. (laughs) That elicited a round of laughter, and my mind bathed in a sudden surge of dopamine. A sensory overload of hormones is a dangerous state for a preteen, the sort of imbalance which unearths dumb, dangerous ideas. Why don't we go over to her house? I suggested. Jason raised an eyebrow. What? Yes, Dean! Knew you were cool! (laughs) Bowen laughed. What an idea! Uh, Nah, sounds kind of silly, mate. Jason frowned. Your mum and dad will see us. No, they won't, you baby! Bowen scoffed. You never crept out of your house before? I just think Dean and I won't be allowed to do sleepovers anymore. Jason sulked. I smiled at my best friend. We won't get caught, man. I promise. I'd never done anything so mischievous before, but I believed that our mission would succeed. My parents were creatures of habit. They both went to bed at eleven o'clock, and my dad's snoring betrayed them ten minutes later. (sighs) We assumed they were asleep. There was a slight chance, I suppose, that my mother might have still been awake. After all of these years, I wish she had been. She would have stopped us. After tiptoeing downstairs, we slipped into the back garden. The front door would have been too creaky, and the back door stood at the other end of the house, farther from my parents' upstairs bedroom than the main entrance. So, there was less chance of being heard. The night felt light. It felt too light, as if we might float away. It lacked any temperature, and it hung in stasis. There was no breeze, but it was not a humid evening. Somehow the air did not cling to my skin. And the moon above, a perfect crescent, shone dimly in the clear sky. That was odd, given it was not concealed by clouds. We're not actually going to talk to Mrs. Appleton, are we? Jason asked. Course not, dimwit. (laughs) Bowen laughed. We don't want her to tell. We'll just... we'll just spy on her. Don't be mean, Bowen, I snapped as we skulked around the side of my house. The boy rolled his eyes in response, but said nothing as we trudged onwards. I hope she still looks hot when we get closer, Isaac whispered. 
I inched the garden gate open, wincing as it uttered a meek groan. The sound was too quiet for my parents to hear, but I suddenly realised we had to think about other neighbours who might spot us. There were so many variables I hadn't considered. Some variables are so terrible that I wouldn't have ever considered them. The four of us formed a line behind the tall hedge at the edge of my parents' property, and then we peeked over the top. I would have used my brain if I were a little older, a little wiser, and a little less besotted. I would have recalled the horror I felt when Mrs. Appleton had spotted me a couple of months earlier. The inexplicable dread of being flattened by her eyes upon my face. However, like my friends, I simply gawped at the captivating neighbour. The blonde beauty on a folding metal sun lounger, donning a blue floral two-piece swimsuit and limply splaying her arms outwards, draping them over the edges of the lounger like loose garments. Did, did you see that? Jason suddenly croaked. Momentarily pulling myself out of Mrs. Appleton's hypnotic aura, I looked at my frightened friend. See what? I asked. But then I froze, mind catching up to my eyes. I was processing events in a delayed manner. There was a backlog of perplexing and exhilarating thoughts in my pre-adolescent brain. However, I'd seen it too. Mrs. Appleton was glowing. Not in the figurative sense. Her flesh pulsated brightly, as though her entire body were coated in layers of cooking oil or a cloudy sheet of plastic wrap. She's amazing, Isaac whispered. Definitely hotter than Jennifer Aniston, Bowen added. Are you two not seeing what Jason means? I whispered fearfully. I'm seeing a sexy night, Lady Dean. <laughs> Bowen giggles. You're so cool for telling us about this, mate. I started to suggest something reasonable. I think we should... <laughs> Crackling interrupted me, and terror followed. As streams of silvery mist rose from Mrs. Appleton's bare flesh, Isaac and Bowen finally fell silent finally wore the same whitened looks as Jason and me. But perhaps we would have been able to explain that. Perhaps, if the evening had ended there, I would have healed. Years down the line, I would have recounted that day and laughed at my childish imagination. I have never been able to deny what happened next. The woman basking in the moonlight that drew something horrid from her skin, began to open her mouth. And once it started opening, it didn't stop in a hurry. Her jaw dropped lower and lower, extending her black gullet far beyond the foot of her chin, a void engulfing the glow of white light from the sky above. <laughs> Isaac whimpered, and everything else happened in a couple of seconds. Mrs. Appleton's eyes shot sharply in his direction, and the boy released a wheeze. <gasps> An understanding wheeze. And when we cast our eyes in Isaac's direction, a unified line of terrified faces witnessed something unexplainable. Our friend had vanished slipped out of reality entirely. With one near-silent utterance, Isaac had simply ceased to exist. And then we cast our eyes back to my neighbour's front lawn. Mrs. Appleton's mouth had returned to normal. Her skin had lost its shimmer, and she was not smiling. In that moment, my lust for the woman vanished. All of the excitement and passion fled my body. In its place, only coldness remained. Only the realisation that Mrs. Appleton, unnaturally beautiful, had always simply been unnatural. And I was very glad that I listened to my father. I knew 
to keep my mouth closed. Worst of all, the neighbour was staring at us, simply standing and staring with a sullen expression at the three remaining boys who peeked over the hedge. Three haunted boys. We backed slowly towards my garden gate, and Mrs. Appleton soundlessly watched as we did. Then we slipped back into the house and crept back to bed, and I took one final look out of the window. Mrs. Appleton was still on her front lawn, looking up at me as I closed the curtains. She did not blink, and she did not look away from me. I rapidly drew the drapes, but I did nothing to still my mind. I knew that she was still watching, and I believe that she could still see us. Jason, Bowen, and I sleeplessly shivered until my mother came into the room eight hours later. Pulled an all-nighter, eh? <laughs> she chuckled. Well, you all look tired, and it serves you right, silly boys. I'm always telling you, Dean, that... I Wait, where's Isaac? We never knew how to explain what happened. After all, we didn't understand it. I still don't. The three of us told people we woke to find that Isaac's sleeping bag was empty. That was all we pretended to know. However, Isaac's father relentlessly hounded my parents for weeks, accused me of being a liar. I didn't have the stomach to face him, because he was right. I was lying. But he wouldn't have believed the truth. I didn't believe it. You might expect that Mrs. Appleton would have moved away shortly afterwards, but she didn't. Admittedly, fleeing might have made her a suspect in the disappearance of Isaac Longton, but that isn't why she stayed. She isn't a human with rational thoughts like you or me. She stayed because she knew that I knew something. If I were to open my mouth, audibly acknowledging her true nature, then I would make the same mistake as Isaac. And I would also disappear.